Well, very shortly, for the first time ever, medical tools will be 3D printed in outer space. The tools were created by a Toronto doctor and her company, 3D4MD. They will be printed on board the ISS, and this technology is revolutionizing space medicine and is also having some very exciting applications right here on Earth. Dr. Julie Lin Wong joins me now in the studio. Welcome back, doctor. Thank you, Ben. Okay, so right now your machine here is 3D printing a finger splint. So give me a scenario of how this might happen on the International Space Station. Uh, so, Ben, if an astronaut injured uh, their hand, on the space station, we could take a laser scan stored uh, from the fitting process for spacesuit gloves, mm -hmm. use free software to create a digital model of a custom fitted finger splint, uplink that digital file to the space station, and 3D print it uh, in space using a solar powered Star Trek replicator. <laughs> a solar powered Star Trek replicator. I love this. Um, talk to me about some of these other things that you've brought in, because these are some other examples of things that we could get done in space, right? That's correct. So um, we could uh, 3D print a three-in-one dental tool if we had to replace an astronaut's filling. Okay. So say all. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. We could 3D print a surgical tool if we had to perform surgery on Mars. And uh, we could also 3D print, uh, this is a sensory evaluation tool that's uh, shaped like a ninja star. And um, you could actually use this to assess an injured astronaut. Really? And the oh, case wow. is 3D printed as well. So the, yeah, the, the possibilities are near endless, aren't they? Yes, it's like having a 3D photocopier. Now, okay, now this was your idea, wasn't it? This was, this was an idea that you had and you approached NASA and you said, I can upload this stuff to the ISIS. T take me through what sounds to me like a very long process full of red tape. So um, it's interesting. So. Uh, 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 my friends created a company called Made in Space, which launched the first 3D printer to the space station. And they invited me uh, to conduct uh, research testing, uh, because I am a researcher and educator um, on board NASA's Vomit Comet. <laughs> so, um, and uh, because uh, people will occasionally uh, throw up um, during these parabolic flights, there are always NASA doctors on board. And so I started chatting with the NASA doctors that we could use 3D printers or Star Trek replicators to make medical supplies for astronauts on deep space missions. And so they came back to me a little bit later and asked me if I could do it. So um, later on, I um, 3D printed the first medical supplies at a Mars simulation habitat. And uh, now this month, we'll be uh, making medical history by 3D printing the first medical tools in space. But the, the benefits, of, like right off the top of my head, are, are immense because you're not sending as much up so there's less cargo going up, uh, and you're able to get exactly what you need for the emergency that you need. And the implications for life on Earth, I mean, if it happens in space, the, the implications for, say, life in, in uh, the, 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 the world outside of big cities is also uh, could be netly improved by something like this. Yes, Ben, you've, uh, you're touching on a really, really great point. So designing 3D printable medical supplies for space missions is very similar to designing them for remote communities. So here's an example. Uh, there is a shortage of skilled healthcare workers in rural communities who can make custom fitted splints uh, like this one. And so uh, we're actually developing a way to use cell phones to scan patients and 3D print custom fitted mallet finger splints out of recycled plastic using solar powered uh, 3D printers. And so uh, this uh, will not only save uh, time and money for Canadian patients, uh, but could benefit the 45% of the world's population who live in rural areas and who lack access to medical care. Now, the, the splint that you are 3D printing right now is similar, I hear, to one that you had made for a patient with cerebral palsy. Can you tell me about that? Yes, Ben. No, that's a, that's a, in fact, this is a, 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 a replica of that splint. Okay. And so there's a Toronto woman with cerebral palsy. I was approached by her hand therapist. And um, she needs to have these splints on all four fingers of her right hand. And she needs to have them replaced. So now, instead of her um, having to book and uh, pay out of pocket for an appointment with a trained health care worker, she can just go to a public library, pick the color she wants, and 3D print another one for less than $2 and not have to miss work. That is amazing. Oh, uh, you have big visions for this company, don't you? There's, um, you're creating a digital library. Uh, what, what does that mean? So we're creating a digital library like iTunes, uh -huh. but instead of songs, people would select and download crowdsourced, quality-tested 3D printable files to make lower-cost and even personalized medical supplies on demand. Really? Locally. 
Wow. And this is Canada's 150th birthday. What plans do you have for the company to celebrate Canada's 150th anniversary? Well, Canada has a proud uh, tradition of excellence with aerospace medicine and universal health care. So we're very excited to be um, launching this historic event during the 150th anniversary of Confederation. And uh, by enhancing uh, space medicine, we can actually advance healthcare here on Earth, um, at home and abroad. I am listening. I'm just fascinated by this machine. Dr. Julie, Julie Lin Wong, thank you so much for joining us here today. And congratulations on what is going to be a huge accomplishment for you, for the, country, for the company, and for the country.